Good morning. This is Father Josh Stevens, Rector of St. John in the Wilderness, and you've just heard the call to prayer from our parish hall chimes. They ask us, they remind us if we are listening to God or not, and so we take time this morning to say our prayers and to do just that, to listen to God in silence and scripture in canticles and psalms together. It's wonderful to pray with you this morning. Our service will begin on page 80 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 105, verses 1 through 22. You'll find it on page 738 in the Book of Common Prayer. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him, sing praises to Him, and speak of all His marvelous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and His strength. Continually seek His face. Remember the marvels He has done, His wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted, allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, let no one oppress them, and he let no one oppress them, and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land, and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar until his prediction came to pass the word of the Lord tested him the king sent and released him the ruler of the people set him free he set him as a master over his household as a ruler over all his possessions to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel, and get from them rods, one for each father's house, 
from all their leaders according to their father's house, houses, twelve rods. Write each man's name upon his rod, and write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For there shall be one rod for the head of each father's house. Then you shall deposit them in the tent of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you. And the rod of the man whom I choose shall sprout. Thus I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the people of Israel, which they murmur against you. Moses spoke to the people of Israel, and all their leaders gave him rods, one for each leader, according to their father's houses, twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. And on the morrow Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds and produced blossoms, and it bore ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord to all the people of Israel, and they looked, and each man took his rod. And the Lord said to Moses, Put back the rod of Aaron before the testimony, to be kept as a sign for the rebels, that you may make an end of their murmurings against me, lest they die. Thus did Moses, as the Lord commanded him, so he did. Here ends the reading. We continue with Canticle 8 on page 85. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. With your might you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. While we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will even dare to die. But God shows his love for us that while, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received our reconciliation. Here ends the reading. Canticle 20, page 94. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, 
Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. You, he said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Here ends the reading. It is always interesting when we spend time in prayer the ways in which God shows up. The tent of meeting continues to be present in our reading from Numbers, something I couldn't have planned as we gather under a tent, those who are able to, this Sunday. And this morning I thought, well, maybe we will have a vision of the cross for those who are joining us online for morning prayer. And we can see the light slowly coming up and shining on this cross over the memorial altar for Walter D. Roberts. And we have in our Romans readings and our gospel reading the very explanation of the cross, the grace that comes with it. Paul saying that we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. Character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which he has given to us. Paul continues, While we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And so we look at this metal cross and we reflect on God's work in Christ, giving his life not for those who loved him, but for those who loved him not, for enemies, for strangers, so that the work of reconciliation might be complete in the world. And we find, of course, this gospel reading as well, where the cross is before Jesus, only he understands it or knows it, and the disciples are told that greatness will be in the kingdom of God about the way of the cross, a way of service, a way of sacrifice. So we begin our day with this image before us, with these readings with us, as we seek to walk in the way of Christ so that the cross might be our way of life. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. For Jane, Scott, Patsy, Fred, We pray for those in authority, for Roy, our governor, for Congress, our judges, for the president. We pray for those whom we struggle to love and those even who are our enemies. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen.
Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for morning prayer today. We'll be here at 4.30 p.m. You're welcome to join us in person or online for evening prayer today. And we'll be streaming on Sunday at 8.45 a.m. on Facebook. And we'll be gathering in person. Send out an email about that. There's info about how to RSVP due to the limited size of the gathering and all that. And uh, we'll post that on YouTube as well a little bit later. I hope that God is with you this weekend. I know that he is and that you know and feel his presence. Blessings.